Hello students, welcome back. Today we are going to do the Pythagoras theorem. What is the Pythagoras theorem? Let's understand this with the help of a right angle triangle. So this is a right angle triangle. Let's name it A, B, C. So this is right angle triangle A, B, C and we have a 90 degrees at B. So here this is 90 degrees. This is a right angle triangle with 90 degrees at B. Now, the side that is opposite the 90 degrees, which side is that? Side AC. The side that is opposite 90 degrees has a name and that is called the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is the longest side of this triangle, of a right angled triangle. Now, this term is very important in the Pythagoras theorem. Now, let me give you another triangle. Now, look at this. In this, which is the hypotenuse? Remember, the longest side is the hypotenuse. So, PQ is the hypotenuse here. Another triangle. Now, let's name this as L, M and N. In this, which is the longest side? As you can see, the longest side is MN. So, that is the hypotenuse. MN is the longest side and that is the hypotenuse. So, you should be able to identify the hypotenuse to help us use the Pythagoras theorem. So, what is this Pythagoras theorem? According to this, the square of the hypotenuse, that means this side, if you multiply two times, that is called square, that will be equal to the sum of the squares of the remaining two sides. So, the square of hypotenuse will be equal to the square of the side plus the square of the side. So, let's do this with the help of an example and let's give it values. So, let's say, now this is the Pythagoras theorem. Now, let's say AB is 3 centimeters, BC is 4 centimeters and AC is 5 centimeters. According to the Pythagoras theorem, AC square, which is a hypotenuse, should be equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, which are AB and BC. So, let's substitute these with the values given. So, this is the example. Let's work it out and see. So, AC square. How much is AC? AC is 5 centimeter. So, 5 centimeter square should be equal to AB square. AB is 3 centimeters. So, this is 3 centimeter square plus BC which is 4 centimeters and square. So, 5 centimeters square means 5 centimeters into 5 centimeters. This should be equal to 3 centimeters into 3 centimeters plus 4 centimeters into 4 centimeters. Okay, now how much is this? 5 into 5, 5 fives are 25 centimeter square is equal to 3 threes are 9 centimeter square plus 4 fours are 16, 16 centimeter square. So, let's take the left hand side now, that is this side. I'm taking the left hand side here, that is 25 centimeter square and I'm writing it here. So, that is 25 centimeter square on the left hand side. That is equal to, now on the right hand side, what do we have? 9 centimeter square plus 16 centimeter square. 9 plus 16 is 25. So, that will be 25 centimeter square. So, can you see that left hand side is 25 centimeters square and the right hand side is also 25 centimeters square. So, this is what the Pythagoras theorem states that the square of the hypotenuse will be equal to the sum of the squares of the remaining two sides. Exercise 18 is on page number 207. Question 1. Triangle ABC is right angled at vertex A. Calculate the length of BC. If AB is 18 centimeters and AC is 24 centimeters. So let's begin by writing what's given to us. Triangle ABC is right angled at vertex A and we're also told the measurements of sides AB and AC. Now let's draw a triangle to understand this better. So we have a triangle here and here it says triangle ABC is right angled at vertex A and A is here that means the right angle is here. So let's show that here. So, this is the right angle. That means this is 90 degrees. 
and AB is given as 18 centimeters and AC is given as 24 centimeters. Now remember in a right angle triangle the side that is opposite 90 degrees that is BC. This is the hypotenuse and according to Pythagoras theorem there is a formula. So before that let's write this statement which says A is 90 degrees and BC is the hypotenuse. So according to Pythagoras theorem BC square that is the hypotenuse square is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So BC square is equal to AB square plus AC square. With the help of this formula we can calculate the length of BC that is what we've been asked to find. So now let's write this BC square is equal to AB square. AB square is 18 centimeters that is 18 square plus AC is 24 centimeters that is 24 square. So BC square is equal to 18 square means 18 into 18 plus 24 square means 24 into 24. So now let's find out this. So BC square is equal to 18 into 18 which is 324 plus 24 into 24 which is equal to 576. So BC square is equal to 324 plus 576 which is equal to 900. So BC square is equal to 900 but we only want to know B isn't it? So that means we have to find the square root of BC square. So since we only want BC, BC will be equal to the square root of 900. I hope you have been taught to find the square root. I will still work it out here for you. So let's find the square root of 900 by the prime factor method. That means first we are going to find all the prime factors of 900. Okay. So now let's start with 900 here with 3. 3 3s are 9. Okay. So we have 300. Again, you divide it by 3. 3 1s are 3. Now we have 100. You can't divide it by 3 anymore. Let's use 5. 5 2s are 10. 20. Again, you can continue with 5. 5 4s are 20. Now you can't use 5 anymore. We're going to use 2. 2 2s are 4. And again, 2 2s are 4. So these are all the prime factors. So here the last step is 2 1s are 2. So we have the prime factors now. Now what do we do? So now we are going to write this as the square root of 900 will be again put the square root symbol and write all the factors that is we have two threes, we have two threes there, then we have two fives and we have two twos. So two into two. Now we are going to pair them up because square root means two, isn't it? So we are going to pair them up with the like numbers that is so I have two threes, I have two fives and two twos. So now I'm going to find again the square root of 900. Now I'm going to remove one from each pair. That means here I have two threes, I'm going to remove one three. Here I have two fives, I'm going to remove one five. Here I have two twos, I'm going to remove one two. So now I don't have to put the square root sign. So that is one three, one five and one two. Now let's work this out. 900 is equal to the square root of 900 is 3 into 5, 3 fives are 15 and 15 twos are 30. So the square root of 900 is 30. You can check that by multiplying 30 twice. 30 into 30, the square of 30 should be equal to 900 and that is 900. So the square root of 900 is 30. That means we have found the length of side BC to be 30 centimeters. So we have found the answer. The length of side BC is 30 centimeters. So this is how we work out a Pythagoras theorem question. Question 2. Triangle XYZ is right angled at vertex Z. So this point you have to be very careful about. Only then you'll be able to find the hypotenuse. Calculate the length of YZ if xy is 13 centimeters and xz is 12 centimeters. 
So what's given to us? Triangle XYZ is right angle at vertex Z. XY is 13 and XZ is 12 centimeters. Let's draw a figure. So we have the triangle here and here it says right angle at vertex Z. And where is Z? Z is here. So the right angle is here. That means this is 90 degrees. So the side that is opposite the 90 degrees, that is this side XY, which is 13 centimeters, is the hypotenuse. So let's write that. Z is 90 degrees. XY is the hypotenuse. Now we are asked to calculate the length of YZ, this side. So this is what we have to calculate. We should find the length of YZ. Okay. So using the Pythagoras theorem, XY square, that is the hypotenuse square, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So let's substitute with whatever values we have here. So XY, we've already been given XY, the hypotenuse is given. So XY square is equal to YZ. Now XZ is already given to us, which is 12 centimeters and 12 square. YZ is what we don't have. So we will write it as YZ square itself. We'll leave it at that because that is what we need to calculate. So now 13 square. So that means 13 into 13 will be equal to 12 into 12 plus yz square. Okay, now 13 into 13 is 169 and 12 into 12 is 144 and to find yz square. So now what we're going to do is we're going to follow simple linear equation. I'm going to bring yz to the other side. So that's yz square on the left hand side plus 144, the whole thing on the left hand side and on the right we have 169. Now yz square alone will be equal to 169 and I'm going to transpose plus 144 to the right hand side it will become minus 144 so y z square is equal to 169 minus 144 which is 25 so to find the value of y z we have to get the square root of y z that is y z will be equal to the square root of 25 that means what are the two numbers? What is the number which when you multiply it twice will give you 25? 5 fives are 25. So the square root of 25 is 5. Or you can even do it the prime factor method if you are not very sure. So now let's uh, get the prime factors of 25. 5 fives are 25. So 5 ones are 5. So the square root of 25 will be, again put the square root sign, 5 into 5. Now put this as a pair and take out only one from it. So the square root of 25, when you take out only one from there, you get 5. So what is the square root of 25? Square root of 25 is 5. So now we have found the value of yz. yz is equal to 5 centimeters. So this is our answer. yz is equal to 5 centimeters. Question 3. Triangle PQR is right angled at vertex R. Calculate the length of PR if PQ is 2.6 centimeters and QR is 2.4 centimeters. So this is given to us. Let's draw a figure. So we have the triangle here and here it says right angled at vertex R. So here we have vertex R here. So it's right angled here. So 90 degrees. That means the arm or the side that is opposite this is the hypotenuse. So let's write it down. So R is 90 degrees and PQ is the hypotenuse. So according to the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Now let's substitute all the values that we have here. Now PQ is already given to us as 2.6. So that is 2.6 square is equal to how much is QR? QR is 2.4. So the square of that and we have to find 
PR square. So the question says calculate the length of PR. So this is what we need to find out. So let's do this now. 2.6 square means 2.6 into 2.6. And this is equal to the square of 2.4 into 2.4 plus PR square. PR square. So now 2.6 into 2.6. When you multiply decimal numbers, ignore the point and multiply and then don't forget to put back the point. So when you multiply 2.6 twice, you get 6.76. Now this is equal to, you have to multiply 2.4 into 2.4. And that is equal to 5.76 plus PR square. So now we're going to find the value of PR square first and then we're going to find the value of PR. So here, what are we going to do? We're going to write this as an equation. So 5.76 plus PR square. Let's bring 6.76 to the other side. 6.76. So now we're going to leave only PR square here because that's what we're going to find out. So let's leave that here. So that will be equal to 6.76 and I'm going to transpose this 5.76 to the other side. So that becomes minus 5.76. So now the value of PR square is 6.76 minus 5.76 which is equal to 1. So now if we have to find the value of PR alone, PR is the square root of 1. That is, what is the number that you multiply twice and you will get 1? It is 1 itself, isn't it? 1 into 1 is 1. So, the value of PR is equal to 1. And since it's the length of the side, this is 1 centimeter. So, what is our answer here? Our answer is 1 centimeter. So, we have been asked to calculate the length of PR and we have found PR to be equal to 1 centimeter. Question 4. The sides of a certain triangle are given below. Find which of them is right triangle. So here we have the sides of two triangles given. So the first one is 16 centimeter, 20 centimeter and 12 centimeters. Now we are asked to find whether this is a right triangle. That means is it a right angled triangle? Now how do we do it? So let's take the first question. Here, let us apply the Pythagoras theorem. Now the triangle will be right angled if the square of the largest side is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. The largest side is the hypotenuse. Now here we have not been told which is the hypotenuse, but remember the largest side is always the hypotenuse. That means applying the Pythagoras theorem, we are going to find out whether this is a right angle triangle. So according to the Pythagoras theorem, the largest side that is a hypotenuse square that is 20 square should be equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides that is 16 square plus 12 square. So let's see whether this is correct, whether this statement is true. So 20 square means 20 into 20 and that should be equal to the square of 16 into 16, that is 16 into 16 plus 12 square, that is 12 into 12. So let's see whether this is true, the statement. So 20 into 20, two twos are four and then we have two zeros. So that is 400. Now 16 into 16 is equal to 256 plus 12 into 12 is 144. So here on the left hand side we have 400, on the right hand side 256 plus 144 is equal to 400. So can you see the left hand side and the right hand side are the same. So this statement is true. That means this triangle which has sides 6 centimeters, 20 centimeters and 12 centimeters is right angled. So the given triangle is right angled. So you can find out like this by applying the Pythagoras theorem. Let's take the next question. So here again we have three sides given to us. We are going to find out whether this also forms a right angled triangle. 
So here, again, let us apply the Pythagoras theorem. The triangle will be right angled if the square of the largest side is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So the largest side is 13 meters and that is the hypotenuse. So let's write that 13 meters, that is 13 square, should be equal to the square of the other two sides, that is 6 square plus 9 square. So let's do this. 13 square means 13 into 13 should be equal to 6 into 6 plus 9 into 9. So 13 into 13 is equal to 169. On the other side, 6, 6 is 36, 9, 9 is 81. So on the left hand side, we have 169. On the right hand side, we need to add up 36 and 81. When you add up these two, you get 117. So as you can see, 169 on the left hand side is not equal to 117 on the right hand side. That means this triangle with measurements 6 meters, 9 meters and 13 meters is not right angled. So the given triangle is not right angled. Question 5. In the given figure, angle BAC is 90 degrees, AC is 400 meters, AB is 300 meters. Find the length of BC. So this is a figure that's given and here it says BAC is 90 degrees. BAC is 90 degrees. So the 90 degrees comes here. So this is 90 degrees. AB is 300 meters and AC is 400 meters. We have to find the length of BC. So given to us BAC is 90 degrees, AC is 400 meters, AB is 300 meters. Now using the Pythagoras theorem. Now here as you can see the side that is opposite A is the hypotenuse and that is BC. So applying that BC square is equal to AB square plus AC square. So let's substitute with values. Now BC square is not given. So we leave it as it is. AB square. AB is 300 centimeters. So that is 300 square plus AC. AC is 400. That is 400 square. So now BC is as it is BC square. 300 square. That means 300 into 300. You have to multiply it twice. Plus 400 square means 400 into 400. So BC square is equal to 300 into 300. It's easy to multiply this. 3 threes are 9 and add all the zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that is 90,000. Plus similarly here, 4 fours are 16. Add the zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is 1 lakh 60,000. So now BC square is equal to 90,000 plus 1 lakh 60,000 which is equal to 2,50,000. So BC square is equal to so much. That means BC is equal to the square root of 2,50,000. We have to find the square root of 2,50,000. So now we're going to find the square root of 2,50,000. 2,50,000. We're going to find the square root. Now, this one can be written this way also, isn't it? Now, 2,50,000 can be written as 25 into 10,000, isn't it? So, how did we get that? Now, I have 25 from this number, 2,50,000. I've taken 25 and I'm multiplying it with 10,000 because there are four zeros here. Now, I'm trying to make this simpler for you to get the square root. Now, square root of 25, what is the number that you multiply it twice will give you 25? It's 5, isn't it? So, this I can write it as 25 instead of 25, I can write it as 5 into 5, isn't it? Now, here, look at this one here. 10,000 is 10 multiplied 4 times, isn't it? Because there are 4 zeros. So, I can write it as 10, 4 times into 10 into 10 into 10. So that will give me 10,000. Now I can pair this up. So what I have got here is the prime factors which I'm going to pair up. So here I can pair this up. 5, there are two 5s. 
here two tens and here also two tens. Now I'm going to remove one from each. So this is 5 into 10 into 10. So that is 5 into 10 is 50. 50 into 10 is 500. So the square root of 250,000 is 500. That means BC is equal to 500 centimeters. BC is 500 meters. Okay, it's not centimeters because everywhere the unit is meters. So our final answer BC also should be in meters. So here we found our answer. The length of BC is 500 meters. We will stop with this for now children. In our next video, we will continue with the remaining questions. Thank you children.